Hello everyone and welcome back to our mini Dubov saga. We are continuing with a really crazy game from the European Team Championship 2019 from Batumi, Georgia. Uh, it's a game from round one and he faces a very young and very talented Danish Grandmaster Jonas Bubia. And uh, I think he just got his Grandmaster norm right before this tournament. He's actually the youngest Dane ever to, to win the title of Grandmaster. So it's uh, qu quite an achievement in itself. Uh, but here he faces Dubov. Uh, Dubov has the black pieces. So let's see. Let's see what happens here. Uh, Bia with the white pieces opens with uh, not d4. He opens with e4. And it's uh, it's uh, uh, pretty normal stuff until, you know, until it... Uh, uh, until it's not e5 knight f3 knight to c6 and Jonas goes for bishop to b5 the real Lopez is on the board we have a6 Morphe's defense bishop to a4 and now knight to f6 so just nicely continuing the game we have castles and now bishop to e7 uh, if there are some newer players who are wondering why not just capture the pawn, you can capture the pawn. This is perfectly fine, but it's just a different variation. Then you have to know what happens after d4 uh, or, or rook to e1 and so on. And if you prefer to play, play it like this, it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, but uh, Dubov prefers the bishop to e7 variation for this game. Uh, obviously, he, he had it specially prepared for, for our young grandmaster friend here. Rook to e1 now, developing the rook, and b5, pushing that bishop back, bishop to b3, and here Dubov castles, and now a4. So this is all very standard uh, when you have this uh, these pawns on a6 uh, and b5, you will try and undermine them with a4. Not just try, you, you will succeed. And here, uh, the moves that are always played here are bishop to b7 uh, and b4. Uh, so there, there are some other moves, but these are the, the absolute top main moves. But for this game, uh, Dubov prepared d5. And at d5, it, it kind of looks too good to be th uh, true. Like, uh, if you can push, uh, you're playing with the black pieces, it's a, it, it will become a very open position. And you are ahead in development, so why not just bust open the center if possible? It shouldn't be possible, but it seems it is if Dubov played it. So the critical variation uh, Jonas has to consider here is what happens uh, if you don't uh, if you don't go after the d4 pawn but rather go a captures on b5 because black cannot recapture the rook would be hanging on a8 so the critical variation here is just pawn captures on e4 bishop uh, pawn captures on c6 we have e captures on f3 queen captures and now e4 so this is the critical variation to evaluate for dubov uh, sorry for for uh, bia and uh, it, uh, it it looks very uh, interesting. White is up material, uh, but uh, can can he actually do something about it? After queen to e2, the engines do prefer white, but Dubov had this prepared. You you really have no idea how to start developing your pieces. Uh, could be very hard to play for white. So white completely ignored this continuation, and after Dubov's d5, he accepted Dubov's game. So e captures on d5 was played, attacking the knight here, and now Dubov just goes knight to a5, attacking that bishop on b3. Uh, so he offers yet another pawn on e5. Uh, Jonas captures it. We have knight captures on e5 and now knight captures on b3. And here there are uh, some of the similar games but after c captures on b3 this position has never been reached again uh, already as of move 11. So here Dubov continues. Bishop to b7. He puts pressure on the, on the d5 pawn and here uh, White's absolute best move is knight to c6, which is what Jonas played. He attacks Dubov's queen and the bishop, and also the bishop is already attacked by the rook. So you have to capture the knight, otherwise you're just going to lose a piece. So bishop captures, d captures on c6, and now Dubov goes bishop to c5. And this is the this is the critical moment in the game where uh, Bia needs to uh, decide how to continue here. And the way to continue here is to push the pawn all the way to d4. Uh, you are behind on development. All of your pieces are still on the back rank and you need to start developing pieces so here d4 uh, giving away one of your one of your pawns because you are up material is the way to go but it's still it's still really complicated for example bishop captures a captures on b5 and now knight to e4 going after this f2 pawn uh, the knight can never be captured because bishop captures on f2 check loses the loses the queen for white so what you would have to do here uh, after this knight to e4 move is just go bishop to e3 and now we'll have a set of trades bishop captures f captures on e3 and now after let's say a captures on b5 you can just trade anything queen captures rook captures and now either knight a3 or or just continue capturing captures captures and knight a3 and you could get this position uh, where white is up a pawn and the white should be a little bit better but still it's very very unclear 
Uh, so this is what white can go for. However, here Bier decided to go d3 instead, not push the pawn all the way. He decided to, to keep his um, uh, material advantage, but now uh, Dubov has one sneaky move up his sleeve. So feel free to pause the video and try to find this move Dubov played uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, as I know all of you got the move. Uh, so we're just going to show it. Congratulations to everyone. The move is Bishop capture son F2. So congratulations to everyone who found it. Uh, you, If you don't capture uh, the bishop, it's just bishop capture son E1 and black has uh, enough to, to win the game. So the bishop must be captured, which was played in the game and now queen to D4 with check. And now again, you have so many options. Do you move the king? King g3? Do you go king to f1? Do you go king to king to f3? Uh, what do you do with the king? Well, uh, it, it seems uh, the, the most natural move, it seems, is just to play bishop to e3 because it comes with an attack on the queen and you really don't care about uh, queen captures here because you're just going to block with the knight and the queen will be guarding the rook. So this is probably what Bia was hoping for. Uh, but instead, Dubov just went knight to g4 with check. Now attacked... Uh, uh, attacked uh, both the king and the bishop and now the king needs to defend the bishop uh, uh, because now the bishop is attacked twice so king to f3 was played now comes knight captures on e3 rook captures and the rook a to e8 threatening just queen captures on e3 and there really uh, aren't all that many good squares for this rook there, there aren't any good squares for this rook uh, you could capture on e8 for example rook captures rook captures but it's still uh, how do you, how do you save this king uh, the e2 square is covered the f2 square is covered and the king simply don't doesn't have an escape route so probably after queen to d2 uh, you would go rook to e6 and now again not not much for you to do you can go check then go rook f2 check uh, there's simply nothing here or if white goes g3 then it's the very tricky queen d5 check king f2 and queen to h1 and there is uh, there is no defense against queen captures on h2 it's just uh, a completely winning position for duo uh, would be so after rook a to e8 we have rook to e2 keeping the keeping the tension here uh, but now comes queen to f6 check by dubov uh, now the king has to go uh, up the board. Uh, these two squares are covered by the queen and by the rook. We have king to g3, uh, but now uh, the position is completely winning for black, but there is only one move that wins the game here, and it's not an easy one to find. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Dubov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that it's uh, a very sneaky pawn move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's pawn to g5. So congrats, congratulations to everyone who found this. And also double congratulations if you've found both this and the previous one. And now the thread is just queen to f4 check followed by queen to h4. If uh, white does something like rook captures here, it's just queen f4 check, king h3. And queen to h4 will be checkmate. So that's out of the question. So here, uh, Jonas tried rook to f2 with an attack on the queen this does prevent this uh, uh qu queen to f4 move but uh it uh, it, it doesn't save you uh it, it doesn't really save you uh we're just going to show what happens if rook, rook to e4 is played it's kind of a move that keeps white in the game uh, but it still loses terribly after uh, rook captures because now again this becomes the threat you don't have the option of capturing the rook and if queen f3 going uh, for a queen trade, then just queen e5 check. And there's nothing for, for white to do. If the king goes here, then rook to h4 is again checkmate. And if you go king f2, then rook to f4 just wins the queen. And the black is uh, so much up in, in material. Uh, it would be pointless to continue this. So after g5, we have rook to f2, like we mentioned. Uh, prevents queen to f4, but it allows a different move for Dubov. So a lot of moves are winning here. Uh, but the move Dubov plays is the absolute quickest way to deliver checkmate, and that is queen to d6 check. This is a start of a mate in six, so queen to d6 check. Uh, and now again, uh, what do you do? Uh, if, if you go king to f3, queen to f4 is mate in one. The rook cuts off the king away from the e file, so you have to go the other way. King to h3 was played, but now queen just uh, finds a different way around. Uh, queen to h6 check. King to g3, uh, uh, or rather king to g4 was what was played in the game, but it doesn't really matter. And now queen to h4 check, and it was in this position that uh, Jonas Bulbia uh, resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Like we said, if king f3, this is just checkmate, so that's out of the question. Uh, your only other option is to go up the board, but then it's just 
queen to d4. You don't even have to capture the rook. Queen to d4 with the threat of rook e5 is game over. Uh, if you block that, for example, rook e2, then comes rook captures, uh, queen captures, and of course, queen to f4 is again checkmate as the pawns cover all of these squares in front of the white king. So really uh, a wild, wild uh, start of the of the team championship. Uh, this was a game from round one and an excellent game for Dubov. Uh, Dubov actually finished the, ter the entire tournament without losing a single game. Uh, he won four games and drew three. And uh, in the end, Russia won first place. Uh, so it was a, g a great result for Russia and a great result for, for, for Dubov himself. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the game, really a wild one. It did not go past this point, so after Queen to H4, uh, it was just a nice resignation, but uh, what, I mean, what a game. So it, it all came down to this uh, moment. Uh, well, there, there were there were a few mo nice moments. It's hard to pinpoint the critical one, but if I had to, it, it would be this one, where white uh, could have gone D4, but for some reason went D3, and, and this was a, an over the board uh, game, so it's not a mouse slip. So uh, D4, D3 instead of D4 could have gone differently, but uh, you know, uh, you allow Dubov such a such a Dubovious move, uh, you 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 will not have a great time. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Hope you guys uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. As you guys are, are uh, you know, you guys keep requesting Dubov's games, so uh, I'm gonna show them as I also enjoy them immensely. Uh, so we, we'll see uh, if we show more of them or we maybe continue the Morphe saga. We'll see how it goes. But tomorrow is the start of Tata Steel, so we're probably going to mostly cover that. Uh, but yeah, uh, so thanks again for, for watching. Uh, I would like to thank James Butler, uh, Victor Yorgulescu, uh, Alex Holland, uh, Ren Devent, uh, and Yuri Gladir for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.